Hi there, welcome back to another video tutorial. In this video, we're going to actually cover the Trigger API, which is probably one of the really simple API inside a React hook form. It's just as the name described, so you can actually trigger validation on behalf of user programmatically. So let's get into the code and see how that taking in action. In this code sandbox, I have an input which is being registered with the validation rules. So let's create a button to validating that the trigger can actually trigger individual validation. Sweet. Let's give it a type of button on click. Oops. Let's go trigger and we can straight away getting the first name out of the type definition. And there is one more thing we want to do. We want to actually subscribe into the form state which is the error state before we actually can see any sort of error printed on the console. Cool. Now if we press the trigger button, cool. We start seeing the error gets printed out of the screen, which is the correct validation rule that get returned. The next part is actually we can have multiple APIs get validated and triggered. So let's having another input on the screen. Let's call it last name. And we give it the same type of validation on the screen. And what we can do is we can actually changing this from a string to an array. What this does is telling React Hook Form to validate two inputs at the same time rather than one. So if I trigger the submit uh, trigger the validation now, we should be able to see two of them. Now the last API it's gonna support. Uh, with the trigger is actually you can trigger the entire form so it's rather simple you can remove everything in the argument and that means just telling react to form to do an entire form validation and that works with the scheme of validation as well so here we go that works now the other thing about trigger is you can actually return the value of the validation on the fly what you have to do is you have to change your function to the asynchronous function and have an await in front of your trigger because validation can literally run asynchronously. For example, you can associate it with the validator function that actually fetch something from the external server. Or you have some sort of validation happen asynchronously on your schema. So you have to await for the result to be resolved before you can return whether the form trigger validation is true or false. So let's test out the result of the output. Cool, we're expecting that to be false. And if we actually have a valid data inside the form, let's say bill, oh, and if we try to trigger again, here we go, we wipe away the errors and we're also returning the correct result as you trigger the validation. Cool. Now there is another really neat feature about trigger. It's actually allowed you to actually focus on that particular input that have error. So let's just quickly try that out. In this case we targeting the first name. So we just plug in the first name and also let's give it option for should focus to be true. And now if we actually wipe everything out of from the first name and we press the trigger that gets focused right away however that's one thing that is really important that for this to work correctly is you always need to providing the reference of your input whether it's controlled input or uncontrolled so reference is important for us to get the focus management right with the trigger API cool I think that's pretty much uh, covers the trigger API and if you're using some sort of user fuel array, then trigger API can actually trigger the entire fuel array as well. That's probably something more advanced we're going to talk about later on. But other than that, I think that's pretty much covered the trigger API. I hope you enjoy this video. I see you in the next one.